I'm with Rona Byrne and Paula Clark today, who have come along and to help me with um, producing this magazine on the deaf community, which we we'll hopefully have it finished in about three months' time. This magazine is going to look at a whole range of issues. Today is just me talking to Brona and Paula about what the magazine might look like and some and some other issues. How accessible was for you as a deaf person going to the vaccination centre? I think um, if, we, if I give a quick project, to go to and get the vaccination, like everyone else, I was very nervous about getting the vaccine. Um, and I chose to go to the SSE arena because it's the closest to me. Um, and on arriving to the arena, the very first thing I was met with was someone in a mask directing me. Um, so I had to explain that I was deaf about nine times before I actually got the vaccine itself. Um, some people were more aware than others. And obviously it's an extremely challenging process, the amount of people involved and the time and energy that people put into it. But for me personally, it was quite a, a frightening process. Um, I was in this big space, um, had no idea what was happening, where we were supposed to go, um, what are we supposed to do after I got the vaccine. Um, so it was having to repeat myself and having to try and let people know that they needed to keep their, their mask on. Um, and one of the things I try to do is wear a deaf friendly mask wherever I go because even though I don't need it uh, myself, I need other people to wear that. What it does is it gets people asking questions. And I have got a lot of questions since I began wearing that mask, and which is fantastic, and people are more open to finding out what it's about. Um, but I think it would have been good if there was more awareness in the, the vaccination process itself. Um, that would have helped me to be calmer about the whole situation. So I'm nervous obviously about the second vaccination that's coming up. I'm wondering whether it will be any better.